So I pasted in some starter code. I really want to focus on the code. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to have a plot for every pitch count. So we're going to have a 0, 0 plot. And these will be pie charts. And we want to know what's his tendency. What is he likely to throw at 0, 0? What's he likely to throw when he's 0 and 2 on the batter? Now, we don't know that he achieved the, the every possible count in this game. And in fact, I know that he never got 3 and 0 on a batter. But we still know what the potential counts are. So, for example, balls can be 0 through 3. And this, again, before a pitch is thrown. We also know that strikes can be 0 through 2. So what we've done here is we've created a plot subplots. Now that returns two things. It returns a figure for us to plot into, and it returns a, either a single or an array. In our, in our case, we're doing a 4 by 3, an array of axes. So we set up a for loop that says let's walk through the balls, B for balls. Let's walk through the strikes, 0 through 2, and let's go ahead and just print those out. So when we say run, not only does it print out the potential counts, 0, 0, 0, 1, balls and strikes, but it also lays out our 12 different plots. From there, let's go ahead and comment out our print statement. And let's create a new data frame. So in this case, the data frame is our original data frame, dot loc, and we're going to select ball count equals B. So again, we're stepping through. B is 0, S is 0 for our first pass here. We're going we're gonna to select the slice where the balls are 0 and strikes are 0, and the pitch frame is the top, because again, we're interested just in Kershaw's pitches. So that gives us a new data frame that we're calling DF. And now we're going to go ahead and build a title for each plot, and that'll be count and it'll be the string of B, the string of S, and then in parentheses, how many of those he threw. Now, how many did he throw? Well, it's the whatever the length of DF, because DF is our new data frame. So when we select this slice out of the larger data frame, the number of matches will be the number of times he got to that count. So we'll go ahead and declare that title list dot append title. So again, we're building these two lists. We're building title list and data list. Because as we walk through and as we generate these 12 graphs, we want to pick just the ith element of those graphs to do the actual plotting with. So now, pasted in our final loop and the plot show. And before we run it, let's talk about what we're doing here. So in this case, remember we said that the fig, or the subplots, return a, a figure and an array of axes. So we're going to walk through that, enumerate axes, flatten. We're going to walk through those 12, and we're going to say x. The x that we're plotting is the data list sub i. Now remember, data list, we appended the whole data frame. So what we should have is 12 data frames that match the count. And we're putting in the data list sub i, which is the data frame, and then the pitch type from that data frame, dot value counts. Now what that's going to do, that's going to create a dictionary of, let's say, fastball 4, curveball 3. So that creates a dictionary when we ask it to output the values, because we don't want each one. The data frame itself would have been fastball, 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 but we just want the overall count of the fastballs. That's what we're graphing. Okay, and then the label for that particular pitch, the name that goes with that number will be the pitch type. And again, to shrink it down to the same number of entries that the value counts have, we're going to do a pitch type dot unique. So let's take this guy out of there. And you'll see what I mean when we, when we actually run it. But now we're going to ask for, for 12 times. We're going to ask for a pie chart graphing X and using the labels of L. So again, what did we put in L? We put the pitch type dot unique. And then finally, we set the title to the title list that we built when we said, here's the count and here's the number of pitches that match that count. So let's 
give that a run and there we go so what we've got is we've got 12 minus 2 like I said he never reached a 3 0 count he never got to 3 and 1 so we've got 10 of the 12 counts that are possible and we start to see some tendencies so so again I, I hope you see where I'm going with this for a sabermetrics statistician on a baseball team these are the kind of things that are making their way to the field right now these are the kind of things that are producing 6,000 shifts you know moving the infield around when somebody comes to bat we're looking at these tendencies we're looking at these spray charts we're looking at these potential count pitches and we'll find out that if you're 0-0 zero, zero, you need to be looking for fastball from Clayton Kershaw he throws the slider 10 percent of the time but otherwise it's the four seamer when he gets ahead in the count he starts to mix it up when he gets 0-2 the mix is even stronger and again I, I won't take you through all of these but you get the idea now we also remember we put the number of times he only got to 2 and 0 one time so you know is he a hundred percent four seam fastball well he only did it one time so you see here the number of times of course he was 0 0 he in a perfect game he'd have faced 27 batters in this case with the error he faced 28 so he had 28 zero, 0 counts.